Oh, okay, so this is the third in the series of lectures by Gabor Lugosha and the last one, okay, and yeah. it's uh, on a somewhat separate topic. Thank you, Vladimir. Um, so today uh, I'm going to talk about um, a problem of estimating the mean of a random variable. Okay. I will explain uh, what the setup is. Uh, let me just say that uh, the, uh, most of the stuff that I'm going to uh, talk about is uh, joint work with these people. Luc de Vroy in, at McGill, uh, Mathieu Leral, who's in Orsay, uh, Roberto in Rio, and Shahar in uh, Technion. Okay. So the problem is, is the simplest setup that you can imagine. We have, a, um, we have independent, identically distributed random variables, uh, x1, xn. They have a common mean, of course, and uh, we will denote this by mu. And the question is that upon observing these n uh, values, how do we estimate mu? Okay. All right, so what's an estimator? An estimator is just any function of, of these observations. Okay. Of course, the, the obvious choice is the, is the empirical mean, right? Uh, and and we, know, uh, we know everything about the empirical mean. For example, we know that, uh, that if the uh, xi's have a finite variance, then we have the, uh, the central limit theorem that tells us that, uh, at least asymptotically, the error that we make is going to be uh, proportional to 1 over root n times sigma times, and, uh, and uh, I will, uh, this is the, the way I prefer to write, uh, this is not really the central limit theorem, this is a consequence of the central limit theorem that says that the errors are, this is what I will call sub-Gaussian, okay? So when, uh, when the error is, uh, is bounded by uh, sigma over root n times root log one over delta, with probability at least one minus delta, then uh, then, then we, I will say that, uh, that this estimator has a sub-Gaussian behavior, okay? So what, what we know from the central limit theorem is that under this very mild condition, just the variance is, uh, is finite, we have, uh, we have this asymptotically sub-Gaussian property, okay? The problem is that uh, I would like to get rid of this, this asymptotic statement, okay? So, so we would like to have estimators that behave like this, have a, a, a sub-Gaussian behavior, but for every n, right? Because we, we don't know, uh, a priori, we don't know when the, the central limit theorem will kick in, okay? And especially uh, today, we, we have lots of uh, applications in which one, one has to uh, estimate the, the mean of not just one random variable, but many of them, okay, simultaneously. So we would really like to have this non-asymptotically. Non and uh, and, and this, this log, square root of log is important because we want to, if we want, we want to be able to use the union bound. All right, so that's, that's the goal, that's the question. Uh, under what conditions are there estimators that have this kind of property? Okay, a very simple condition is that if the distribution is nice, and we, I will call this sub-Gaussian, when the, the moment generating function of the distribution is bounded by the moment generating function of a Gaussian with the same variance, with variance uh, sigma squared, uh, then a, a simple Chernoff bound uh, gives us that the, that the empirical mean has this sub-Gaussian behavior, okay? So if the, uh, if the moment generating function is nice, the, which, which is equivalent to saying that the, the tails of this random variable go down very quickly, quicker than, uh, than Gaussian tails, then the empirical average has this sub-Gaussian property, okay? Good, but of course this is, uh, this is a very strict condition and, and very basically impossible to, to verify. Uh, the empirical mean has some nice property. It is, 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 is really easy to compute, and uh, it doesn't require any prior knowledge about the distribution. Okay, it scales automatically with the, with in particular, it scales automatically with the, with the variance. Okay, the problem is that if the, t the distribution is not sub-Gaussian, uh, there's uh, we are very far from being able to verify uh, this property. In particular, if le let's say for simplicity, I will assume that the variance is finite. Okay, but I don't want to assume much more than that. Then all we can say, well, we still have Chebyshev's inequality, right? Which, which says that the, uh, the, the error is going to be proportional to 1 over root n uh, times sigma. That's the right thing, but the dependence on delta is exponentially worse. Okay? And this is tight. Well, one, one can easily come cook up uh, distributions under which you can see that for every fixed n, uh, this is the best you can do. For every fixed n and delta, there exist distributions with, with, uh, with uh, 
with, with variance uh, sigma squared such that, uh, such that the, this error is going to be larger than that. Okay? So Chebyshev is tight, and we are dead. At least we are dead if we insist on using the, uh, the empirical mean. So the question is, are there better estimators? And the, the answer is yes, and this goes way back to the uh, work of Nemirovsky and Yudin, but, but this was discovered independently by, by, by several smart people in different contexts. So uh, this is the so-called median of means estimator. Okay, so, so here's what we do. We, uh, we, we take our data and we, we, we partition it into uh, disjoint blocks. Within each block, we compute the empirical mean. And then we, we, we take the median of that. Okay? So this is called the median of means estimator. All right? So this is not an unbiased estimator. The expected value of this is not the right thing because, because of this nonlinear uh, operation, the median. But it does have, if we choose the number of blocks wisely, then it does have the sub-Gaussian behavior. Okay? So what does this, this little lemma say? It says that if, if k, the number of blocks, is log 1 over delta, then for every n, we have this nice uh, uh, sub-Gaussian bound. This is exactly of the form uh, I wanted. I don't care about the constant right now. And then this hasn't even been optimized. Okay? The, the, the right constant is not root 32, but, uh, but it's 2 or something like that, root 2. Yeah? But I'm not worried about this. So how do we prove this? It's really easy, because each of these guys, uh, with, by Chebyshev's inequality, each of these guys is within, uh, within distance uh, square, root, uh, uh, square root 1 over square root of m, right? m is the, uh, is the number of points in each block, uh, times sigma, right? So each of these guys is within this distance with a constant probability, with probability 75%. Okay? And now we have k of these guys. So we have k points. Right? This is the true mean. For the median to be far away from this, it must be that at least half of them are far away. Right? But at least half of them are far away. We know that, uh, we know that each one of them is within a good distance with probability 75%. So the probability that half of them are far away is less than e to the minus k for a constant k. Okay? So we choose k to be log 1 over delta, and m is just n divided by k. So we get, we get that. Okay? So that's the proof of, uh, of, of this very simple lemma. It's really clever and, and very nice. Okay? Good. So that's the proof. So the, so the, the the median of means estimator, and then we, I will talk a lot about this, uh, has this nice sub-Gaussian behaviors. It's nice that it scales automatically with sigma. We don't need to know the, the variance. However, we do need to know uh, delta. Okay? That's a problem. So, so for if, if uh, uh, this estimator works with probability at least 1 minus delta, but you have to tell me what delta you want before I give you the estimator. Okay? So if you want an estimator which works 99% of the time, I will give you one. If you want an estimator that works 99.99% of the time, I have to give you another estimator. Okay? Uh, okay. Uh, there, I will talk about generalizations of this. Uh, another nice thing is that this works even when the variance doesn't exist, but, uh, but only uh, some moment that is strictly greater than 1 exists, and then we get something of this form. So, so here the rate is not 1 over root n anymore, but it depends on this alpha. It gets worse. Okay? But it turns out that this is the best you can do. Okay? So there, there is a lower bound that matches that. Okay? And this explains why we are after sub-Gaussian bounds. Okay? Because if, uh, if the, the only thing we know is that the variance exists, let's say if, if alpha is 1, then any estimator, uh, no estimator can do better than some Gaussian. Okay? So for, for uh, let's say if alpha is 1, for, uh, for any value of sigma squared, that's going to be m, there exists a distribution. So any estimator you give me, I can give you a distribution such that your estimator will have an error which is greater than that, this. Okay? So in this sense, the median of means estimator is 
is, uh, is the best one, one, one can hope for. Okay? This is really easy to prove. Basically, uh, basically we, uh, <coughs> we take two uh, distributions. One of them equals 0 with a great probability and some value c with a small probability. And the other one is 0 with the same probability and minus c with, the, with that probability. Okay? And then if all the sample are, samples fall in 0, then these two are indistinguishable. So we will make at least uh, this error. And then we just plug in the numbers to, 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 match, the, to, match, the, um, to match the expectation and, the, uh, and, and, the, and these moments. Okay? So that's, that's really easy. OK, uh, all right, uh, OK, good. Now, uh, so uh, the problem with, um, the problem, as I said, the problem with this estimator is that, uh, is that we need to know this delta, this confidence level. OK, so it would be nice to have a, a single estimator that works for at least a large range of these deltas. OK, so I will call an estimator uh, multiple delta sub-Gaussian, okay. if, uh, if it is sub-Gaussian for all deltas in, that, in this range, uh, right? and this is what it, what it means to be sub-Gaussian. Okay. So the, the question is, do there exist uh, multiple delta sub-Gaussian estimators? And uh, the short answer is no, and the, and the longer answer is that maybe. Okay. So here's, uh, here's one uh, example. So, so uh, one can prove, for example, that that's e not hard to prove, that if all we are willing to, uh, to assume is, is that the, the variance is infinite, then no estimator can be, uh, can be sub-Gaussian, can, can have this type of error for essentially any two uh, non-trivial levels of delta. Okay? Okay. So, there, so there, there are no... Uh, one needs more assumptions. If, if, there, if we, we don't have any assumption, then even, uh, and, and the, uh, one, one can cook up a, uh, counterexamples only considering the, the class of Poisson distributions. So even if you want to estimate the, 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 the mean of a Poisson distribution, it's going to be impossible. It's going to be impossible to ha get uh, sub Gaussian estimators for, that work for all deltas. Okay? But if we, if we are willing to assume something more, for example, we, we might be able to, uh, we, we might have some information about the second moment. If we know that the variance is between two values, okay, in, in a range, uh, and then, then, we, uh, then we consider the class of all distributions whose variance is between the two, these two values, and, uh, and we denote R to be this, uh, this ratio, then uh, one can show, of course, for each n, we might have a different, we, we might have a different, different values. Okay? If this r is bounded, then there are uh, multiple delta sub-Gaussian estimators, right? So single estimator that works uh, for all deltas in a large range, for exponentially small all the way up to one. Okay? So for the class, but if, if we essentially know the variance up to a constant value, then, then this is possible. If, the, if R is unbounded, it grows uh, in any slow manner, then we, there are no sub-Gaussian sub estimators, uh, multiple delta sub-Gaussian estimators for any delta that goes to zero. So there's actually quite a sharp distinction. Okay. All right. And one, one cannot hope for uh, better than exponential here. That's, that's not difficult to see. Okay, I'm not going to say too much more about this. Uh, ma maybe I can say uh, how one can construct. So, in, for example, in the case when, when this is uh, finite, how one can construct good estimators. Essentially, what, what one needs is a little bit more than, than just an estimator of the mean for, for a single delta. If we have an estimator of mean and an estimator of a confidence interval. If we can estimate a confidence interval, then we can use a method that's called Lepsky's method to aggregate these estimators. Okay, this is easy. I don't want to uh, spend too much time on this. Okay, so essentially, if you have, uh, if you have est point estimators of the mean together with, uh, with confidence intervals, then, you, then, then it is possible to aggregate them. Okay? But if, if we don't have uh, information on the variance, then finding these confidence intervals empirically, that's, uh, that's impossible. All right. Okay. 
And the, uh, okay, I'm gonna skip this because I want to spend more time on the multivariate problem. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so the picture so far is that when uh, for 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 a, for a real valued random variable, we uh, we can uh, under the only assumption that the second moment exists, there exist sub Gaussian estimators. Okay. That have to de depend on delta. Okay. Now, what happens? when we are in Rd, okay? So now let's take a, a random vector and, uh, and I'm gonna still assume that the second moment exists, okay? So the sigma is the covariance matrix, which we don't know. Uh, and the mean is, uh, is, is this vector, okay? So the mean is now a point in Rd and we want to, we want to estimate this, okay? And just as before, we would like to have a sub-Gaussian performance, okay? Now the first question, what, what does it mean sub-Gaussian in, in high dimensions? All right. Okay. So let's look at what, what happens if we have uh, a Gaussian vector. Okay. So if you have a Gaussian vector, then uh, then then one then it's known that uh, that the, the empirical mean is the optimal uh, uh, estimator. So let's look at what the empirical uh, mean does. Okay. So uh, <coughs> if I'm going to be interested for now in the, uh, in the Euclidean, Euclidean distance of an estimator from the true mean. Okay. Maybe you can argue that this, this is not what wants, but let's say it, it's at least a natural way of, uh, of, 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 uh, of measuring the quality of an estimator. Okay. So this is our estimator. This is the true mean. And I, I, I want to know how far it is from the, uh, uh, f how far they are from each other. Now, the expected value of this norm that's, uh, that's the square root of uh, trace over n. That's very easy to see, okay? And, uh, and the concentration of this, right? This is, a, this is a Lipschitz function. The norm is a Lipschitz function. So, so from the Gaussian concentration inequality, one shows that it's, uh, the tails depend on not the trace, but the, the largest eigenvalue of, uh, of, uh, of, the, um, of, uh, of, of the covariance matrix. Okay, because this is a Lipschitz function with, uh, right, if, if we, um, okay, th this follows easily from the Gaussian concentration inequality, okay? So this is what I will call uh, sub-Gaussian performance, okay? So we would like, there are two terms here, one that depends on delta, okay? But that term, if for a fixed delta, at least is much smaller than the main term here, okay? There can be a factor of d uh, difference between the largest eigenvalue and the sum of the eigenvalue. So this is what I will call a sub-Gaussian performance. So th now the question is, do there, do there exist estimators of the mean under the only assumption that, uh, that, the, the, uh, that's the second that the covariance matrix exists that achieves a performance of this type? All right? OK. So <coughs> a natural idea is, is to just let's see what, uh, what uh, median of means does. OK? Now, so wh what do we do? That we do the same as before. We uh, we partition our data into blocks. Within each block, we compute the uh, the empirical mean, and now we take the median of these guys. Okay, but what's the median in high dimension? That is, uh, there's no real consensus of how, how to define the median. Well, there, one natural uh, definition is the coordinate-wise median, right? So within, within each component, we, we compute the median and we, and we take the the vector of those. There's something called the geometric or spatial median, which, is, which generalizes the, uh, uh, the, the notion that the median is just, uh, is just the point that minimizes the sum of the absolute differences. Okay? Now, this can be uh, generalized several ways, but one of them is when, when we, we take the point that minimizes the sum of the Euclidean distances to the, to the data points. Okay? So that's called the geometric median. Another possible notion of a median is that we, we have these points, right? I want to take the, uh, the smallest ball that contains, let's say, half of the points, OK? And we take the center of that. That's another. There's the, the Tukey median. That's a very nice one. So the Tukey median is that uh, you compute the depth. The depth of each point can be computed by we, 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 we start with a, with a half space from infinity, and we slide it, and we count how many points we have to cross until we arrive to our point, okay? And we take the minimum over all half space, all, all directions. That's the two key depth of a point. And now you can take the deepest point. That's the two key median, okay? So people have, have been using it. 
Okay, and uh, I will introduce a new kind of notion that turns out to work well. Okay, so so let's let's look at these uh, notions of the median. For the coordinate-wise median, we we can use our our uh, univariate inequalities and get something which looks nice. So. Uh, uh, with, with probably at least one minus delta, uh, the, the distance of the uh, coordinate-wise median of means to the true mean is bounded by a constant times the square root of the trace over n times log 1 over delta, but now the d dimension comes in here, okay, which is not too bad because it's under the log, but it shouldn't be there. And maybe more seriously, this trace shouldn't be multiplied with the log, right? Remember. The, our, our sub Gaussian desire was that there's the trace divided by n and the log is separated and it's multiplied by something much smaller. Okay? So this is not quite that. At least uh, I, this might do better, but we don't know. Okay, I, uh, now, uh, what about the smallest ball median? Right? So, so I, now we, we take the, the smallest ball that contains at least half of the points. The exact same argument that I mentioned for in the one-dimensional case can be repeated, right? Because, uh, because, uh, because within uh, e each point will be within distance with 75% uh, possibility, uh, probability. Uh, each point will be there with, with, with a good uh, probability. So uh, for, the, for, the, for this median to be far away, at least half of them uh, have to be wrong, and, uh, and that has exponentially small probability. So we, we get this bound, okay? which is uh, where we're getting closer. There's no, the dimension doesn't come up explicitly here, which is nice. Right? The sub-Gaussian statement was, was an infinite dimensional statement. It, it works. There's no d in here. Right? If, if the trace of the covariance operator is finite, then this is finite. Okay? But still, it's not sub-Gaussian because we have this product here. Uh, so this is really nice. It, uh, uh, <coughs> th there's a problem with it, a uh, computational, obvious computational problem. Uh, computing this median is, uh, is, is an NP-hard problem. Computing the center of the smallest ball that, uh, that contains half of the points, I think that's an that's a NP-hard problem, but that can be fixed. And uh, your own Stas Minsker had a nice paper on this where, uh, where, he, where he took uh, the uh, the geometric median of means, okay, and, he, and he proved the same kind of upper bound. Okay? And the nice thing about the geometric median of means is that this is a, a convex optimization problem that can be actually uh, computed. The computational geometry people are interested in this, and there are papers that show that this can be uh, computed in essentially in linear time. Okay? So it's, it's really fast. And it has this almost, not quite sub Gaussian behavior, but it's an infin infinite dimensional statement. Okay? So this is already very nice. Uh, okay, so how do we? Do, uh, but but it's still not quite uh, not quite uh, um, sub Gaussian. Okay, so how do we construct a sub Gaussian estimator? Right. So uh, <coughs> the the point of view that we're gonna take is that what, what's the uh, what's the mean? The mean is nothing but the the minimizer of this quadra of this quadratic function. Right? It's the minimizer of the expected value, expected di square distance from the mean. Okay? And we would like to find that point. Okay? So that means that if we have two candidates, we can compare them. Which one is a better candidate for being the mean? Okay? So how do we do that? Well, we, we kind of have to estimate this expected value for both A and, and for, for B and compare them. Okay, and then uh, naturally we can use the median of means estimator to make do this comparison. Okay, so I will say that A defeats B. A is a better candidate to be the mean than B. If uh, again we we, we uh, chop our data into blocks and uh, and we compare on each block which one is a better one, and uh, and we declare A to be a winner if it beats B on more than half of the blocks. Okay. So we can, this is what we call this a median of means tournament. Okay? We can run a tournament over all points of Rd to declare who is the best. Okay? All right, so this is, uh, so A defeats B if uh, most of the blocks it is closer to, uh, to these, uh, 
to, to these. Uh, okay, so one, one can rewrite uh, what I just said uh, in, in this form. So within, within each block, we can compute the, uh, the mean. And A defeats B, where, where if, uh, if uh, A is closer to this average on, on the majority of the blocks than B. Okay? So again, we can just start by, uh, by computing these means within the blocks. We have now K points. And, and, and based on these k points, we can make comparisons between these two points. Okay. Now here's uh, the key lemma. The key lemma says that the mean is gonna beat everybody that's far away. Okay. So the true, with probability at least one minus delta, the mean, the true mean, will be uh, the winner of a match. Okay. Against all points simultaneously at the same time. Okay, that are farther than this R away. Okay, and this is the this has the right this is the right quantity. Okay, because uh, because we have these two terms, right? The, the square root of the trace of, of the covariance matrix plus uh, the largest uh, but plus the operator norm divided by n times log one over that. Okay, and once we have this lemma, this is the key lemma. It's it's now easy to actually construct an estimator. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, for each candidate point, we can, uh, we can uh, define the set of all those points that defeat that point. Okay? These are compact sets. These are bounded sets. For, for each point, uh, of course, if, in any direction, if you go far enough, then, then, then you will, we will beat the really far away points. Okay? So these are bounded sets. For each point, we can write this down. And now we choose the point that minimizes the radius okay? of this set. Okay, the radius is just the, the largest distance from the center. Okay. Right? For, for each point we have, we have a set. And we, we choose the set that minimizes this radius. Okay. Why does this work? Because uh, the radius of the set of the minimizer is, uh, by definition, is smaller than the radius of the, of the set whose, uh, that's centered at, at the true mean. And we know from our lemma that this is smaller than r, right? R is uh, r is that this uh, sorry is this ugly ex expression? Okay. So by the lemma we know this is the lemma. Okay. And now uh, there are two cases: either uh, mu and hat beats r, in which case mu and hat is in this set. Okay. But that means that their distance is less than r. Or if mu if mu mu beats mu n, then 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 it's that because of the radius of this is less than mu. Okay, so in, in both cases, uh, we know that, the, that their distance is smaller than r. Okay? But the cost of this? Ah, I will come back to that. Infinite. Okay? I, I, the, the way, I, uh, the, the way I, uh, I set it up, of course, this is impossible to compute. Okay? Well, one can, uh, one can try to approximate. I, I'll, I'll come back to this in, in a second. Okay, but, uh, but at least the existence theorem is this. That the, the estimator I just defined uh, has the property that uh, that if we set k as before, uh, log one over delta, then with probability at least one over delta, uh, the distance, the Euclidean distance between these two is is bounded by this nice sub Gaussian co quantity. Okay, of course now the constants are ugly and uh, and, and suboptimal, but uh, uh, but but that's what. At least up to a, a universal constant, this is uh, what we wanted. Okay, so no other condition uh, needed here, apart from the existence of the of the second moment, uh, and it is infinite dimensional. There's no uh, dependence on the dimension. Okay. Okay. Uh, so so before. Okay, let me just say it now. So yeah, so computation, of course, is, 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 a, is a challenge. And uh, up to two weeks ago, I've been telling this problem to many people. But then uh, two weeks ago, uh, Sam Hopkins, a postdoc at Berkeley, he came up with a with, with a, with a, so he, he, he took this estimator and, uh, and he came up with a clever semi-definite relaxation of it, of this optimization problem. And he proved that that can be computed in a, uh, something like k, k is the number of blocks, k times log, uh, what, what was it, d times k to the power of 8 or something like that. So at least it, it's polynomial time, it doesn't depend on the dimension. Okay. Now if there are really 
really fast quasi linear time algorithms that's still open but at least for the semi definite relaxation you still have the bound yeah and you still have the same bound yeah so he he can prove that the the same bound holds yes yes okay so so that's really nice there, there exists uh at least there exists a polynomial time computable uh, sub gaussian uh mean estimator okay of course if 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 you're happy with just a little bit less right you don't insist on on, on uh, computation on, uh, on on true sub Gaussian, then you can go. Uh, you can use Minsker's estimator, which is really fast. Or Olivier Catoni also has very very simple estimators that are not quite sub Gaussian. But if you assume a little bit more, then 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 it is sub Gaussian. Okay. So he needs a, uh, a little bit more than than second moment, and he needs to 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 work a little bit harder. But then the the estimators are are very easy to compute, so it's, it's unclear. So there might be uh, really fast algorithms that are sub-Gaussian, but uh, we don't know yet. Yeah. Oh, knowing delta is, is still necessary because of the same. It, it, even in one dimension, we, we need to know. Okay. So <coughs> now I'm going to spend uh, a few minutes of, uh, of telling you how one can prove such a statement. Okay. So, so why is it true that, uh, that the mean beats everybody that's far away, okay? That's sufficiently far away with, with, uh, with probability uh, 1 minus delta, okay? So that's, uh, that's here. So there are three steps. So first of all, we, we rewrite what it means that the mean defeats another candidate point, okay? It just means this, okay? What, whatever it is, it's not... Uh, so x, this is the centered version of, of x, and then we, we take the inner product of, uh, so v is just the shifted version of b, okay? So v vector is a shifted version, and, and this is what, what we need, what we need to prove, okay? That's the statement that, uh, that uh, mu uh, defeats every vector. So, so this is what we need to prove, okay? That this happens on the majority of the blocks, all right, and uh, and because of uh, and it suffices to prove to points that are exactly distance r away because because for for the rest it just follows from from this, okay? It will just become be even more true, okay? So what do we do? Well, first we fix a v, <coughs> okay? Fix a vector, and uh, and and show that this will happen just by Chebyshev's inequality, okay? So for an, and, but with a, a sufficiently large probabilities. It's a little bit of the same spirit as, as for the median of means estimator, but we, we have to be a little bit more careful. So for any single alternative, uh, mu will be the winner with a really large probability, okay? Now we can discretize the, the sphere, okay? So all these points are on the sphere. Now we can discretize the sphere and we can take, well, we can take e to the k over 100 points and take the union bound and we will still have some wiggling room, right? So if, if I take uh, a, discre a discretization of, uh, uh, of, of the sphere and uh, the discretization should be in this norm, the norm induced by the, uh, by the, by the covariance matrix, the distance induced by the covariance matrix, then uh, this discretized set that has that's an epsilon cover that, that is radius epsilon within this distance, within this norm, is uh, <coughs> going to have sufficiently few points, e to the k over 100 points, if we choose epsilon to be like this. Okay? This can be proved using, uh, uh, using uh, Sudakov's inequality for, for Gaussian processes. It is, okay. Uh, so now we know that simultaneously over, for every point on this cover, every point uh, mu beats every point on this cover. Okay? Now the only thing that we, 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 we have to check is, is that, uh, if, we, uh, that if, if a point is sufficiently close to, uh, to one of these discretized points, that things cannot go wrong. Okay? So we, we have to prove that with, with the sufficiently high probability, uh, on most of the blocks, things won't change much if we move a little bit away from these points. Okay. Don't read this, uh, but that's that's essentially what we need to prove. Okay, and uh, and this this can be proved by standard concentration and empirical process uh, techniques. Okay, it takes a little bit of work, but but that's uh, 
That's essentially the, uh, the, the argument. Okay? So first, we prove that for a, for a, a single point, uh, the mu, mu is the winner with, with, a, with, a, uh, with the 1 minus exponentially small probability. Then we can take uh, an, uh, a cover that's just a little bit, uh, that, that's exponentially large. And, and then we, we just have to check that within uh, the little sets of the cover, uh, nothing can go wrong. All right, so this is what I already mentioned, the, the Sam Hopkins' uh, algorithm that, that works. OK. All right. <coughs> now, um, so far, I, we, we measured the distance in the Euclidean norm, but that's not always the, uh, not, not always the, the natural norm. OK, so, so <coughs> I'm, I'm not going to, uh, now I'm going to uh, consider the problem, the same problem as before. But now we want to measure the distance with respect to some other norm. Okay? So for, uh, pe people have, uh, have considered uh, uh, the case when the, these, uh, these random variables are matrix valued. Okay? And in that case, maybe uh, the spectral norm or, or some other norm is more, more, more natural than the, uh, than the Euclidean norm. Okay? And, uh, so uh, Stas Minsker has papers on this and so on. Okay, but so the, the, the general problem is now this. We have uh, IID vectors with mean mu covariance matrix sigma, still the same assumptions as before, but now we measure the distance with respect to some given norm. Okay? Now you can ask the, the same question as before. What is the best accuracy confidence trade-off? Okay? What, what's the, uh, what's the, the right notion of sub-Gaussian uh, property in this case? Okay? And, uh, as before, we, we first look, we look at what happens with the, uh, we, we can look at what happens with the empirical mean and what happens if, if the uh, distribution turns out to be Gaussian. Okay? And from this, we will have a guess of what, uh, what we should have. Okay? So if you look at the empirical mean, then, uh, then it's a fi then, uh, and, and if you look at the, the expected value of the norm, okay, then this will behave roughly, like the expected value of the norm of, uh, of a standard Gaussian, of, of a Gaussian random variable with the same covariance matrix. Okay? This, is, this one can prove uh, by standard uh, methods. All right? So the, uh, and, and this, uh, so the empirical mean will have this with, with probability 80%. Okay? Oh, uh, so it, it's going to... Uh, this, the, the, this distance will be bounded by, by something of this sort. Okay? So, so somehow... So this is in which case when the x is what's up goes here? No, no, no. This is, all, this is for the expected value. This is for ju just, uh, just when, the, uh, when the covariance matrix exists. Okay? Yes, the norm is not as same as the Okay? You can, do, you can do symmetrization and, uh, and, uh, and stuff like that. This is to set up what to aim for. What, what to aim for, exactly. Exactly. Right? So this is, this is true always. And, and if, uh, if the distribution is Gaussian or sub-Gaussian, then, uh, then uh, <coughs> uh, um, you then, uh, then can ask, what, what do we expect here? And, uh, and again, by, by kind of standard uh, arguments, you can show that there are two terms. In the Gaussian case, there are two terms that will show up very similar to, to our uh, terms before. One of them is the expected norm of, of a Gaussian with the same covariance matrix. So b before this was the, uh, the square root of the trace of the, uh, when, when this is the Euclidean uh, norm, this is the square root of the trace, right? And there's the other term, which only depends, which, de which depends, this is the only one that depends on, uh, on delta, that has this form, which, so here uh, B0 is the, uh, is the unit vol of the dual norm. And, uh, and we take the supremum uh, of the expected squared inner product and the square root of that, okay? So in the... Uh, <coughs> lambda max. This is lambda max, right? So in, if, if this is the, uh, the, the Euclidean norm, then it is lambda max, okay? So this is what we call uh, sub-Gaussian, all right? That's this. And, uh, okay, so the question is, do there exist do there exist uh, uh, mean estimators that achieve this? All right. And then, the, as, I, as I just said, the, in the Euclidean case, this is the same uh, as, as what we had before. Okay. And the answer is yes, of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it. Uh, 
And, uh, and this estimator is similar in spirit, but, uh, but it's, it's different from, from the previous one. Uh, <coughs> so again, we start by, uh, by forming k blocks. In each block, we compute the, uh, the mean. So this is all median of means kind of uh, philosophy. And, uh, <coughs> and now take the set of all the extreme points of the dual norm, of, of, the, of the unit ball of the dual norm. Okay. And uh, <coughs> for, for each t, we, we, we look at these slabs. Okay. So we look at uh, the inner product with, the, with, the, with, the set, with, the set, with these means and, uh, and for e every y. And, uh, and we, we, we look at all those y's that are within epsilon distance for more than half of the blocks. Okay. And now we take the intersection of these guys. Okay. And, uh, and select mu to be uh, any point in this. Okay. So this depends on epsilon, which is the desired accuracy. But, uh, but, but we can... Uh, if we don't know the desired accuracy, then we can just take the, 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 the smallest epsilon for which this set is not empty. And that will work. Okay? But if we know, uh, if we know what, the, what the desired accuracy is, if we know if some oracle uh, gives us this value, then, then we, can, we can take that value in the definition of these and, uh, and define this set. One can prove that for that value, this set is not empty with high probability, with probability at least 1 minus delta, and then any point in that set will work. Okay? Uh, otherwise, if we don't know it, we just take the smallest epsilon for which this set is not empty. And that's going to work. Okay? So, <coughs> so the, the, and, and this will work. I'm, uh, I'm not going to say much about the, the proof of this, but let, may, maybe uh, let me just say that this comes from... Um, from a general fact that if, if we are given uh, a class of functions and uh, x1, xn, then <coughs> what we are trying to do is to estimate, to come up with some estimator, phi uh, f and, uh, and the data. Let, let me write phi n f, such that for all f's in this class, this estimator is a good estimator. Okay. All right. So this is the, somehow the, the uniform estimation problem. Okay. And and uh, and we show that uh, what and, and basically this is what we use. Okay. Uh, so so we, we we solve this problem, and then uh, these functions are just gonna be these uh, the uh, so the functions. Uh, this class of functions will, will uh, correspond to the, uh, to the dual of the, of, of the unit norm, and, uh, and, and, and they're going to be these functions. Okay? So once we, we solve this problem, we can just apply it here. Okay? Sorry, I missed it. What is x star of y and x star of y? Is so it's just, it's just the, 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 the functional. It's just the inner product of x star and y. So, so this comes from, from a more general setup in which we, we have a class of functions and, uh, and we, we are trying to estimate the, uh, the expected value uniformly within the class of functions. And, uh, and you can show that there are, uh, there are two uh, ingredients, two, two uh, quantities that, uh, that, that will uh, drive how large this can be. So again, what, what we want is that this should be smaller than epsilon with probability greater than 1 minus delta. Okay. And, uh, and this right trade-off will, will depend on two things. First of all, how well one can uh, estimate individually each of these functions. And that's somehow the, this, this second term. And the first term will depend on, on the richness of this class. And the richness is, uh, is, uh, is defined in terms of covering numbers and Radamacher averages. But I, I don't want to go uh, too deeply in that. Okay? So this is, uh, this is an estimator. Not computable uh, as, as, as it's, I mean, not efficiently computable as it's written here. It's an, uh, another challenge for people like Sam Hopkins. All right. Uh, and one can show that this is, these terms are uh, essentially necessary. Okay. So, um, so this, uh, the, the second term is necessary even when, when X is Gaussian. 
Okay. And uh, <coughs> okay. And, uh, well, and, and the other term is essentially necessary. We, we cannot prove that it, it is necessary. Uh, it, it comes by bounding the covering numbers using the Sudakov's inequality. Whenever this inequality is sharp, then, uh, then, then uh, but, uh, but, but basically what, what we can show is that uh, it, it's going to depend on the covering numbers of, uh, of, the, of this unit ball. Okay? But up to some logarithmic factors, it is uh, the best one can use. One can hope for. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna finish here with uh, flashing just a, a few uh, references where where all these results can be found. Okay, so the one-dimensional stuff is in this paper, and uh, in uh, this is uh, for the the the, no the sub-Gaussian estimator. This is for the general norms, and and this is extensions to regression problems. Okay, so for, for regression problems, one can ask the same, same kind of questions. When, uh, when heavy tails can be an issue, when, when we, we, we don't have sub-Gaussian performance, then one can use this type of techniques, uh, at least to prove the existence of, of good regression function estimators. And of course, the computational issue is wide open there. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Questions? Yeah. So, how would uh, I want to estimate a functional of mu? Uh, sorry, sorry? Functional for a functional of mu? Uh-huh. Uh, will the plug-in estimator? Uh, for a functional of mu? Okay. A linear functional. A linear functional of mu. That's a good question. Uh, and you know the functional, then... Uh, I guess a plug-in estimator. Okay, well, we have to write down what exactly the uh, the goal is. But yeah, uh, the plug-in estimator does something reasonable, I guess. I don't know if you can beat that. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, when you use Levski's method, uh -huh. uh, you uh, use approximation of a confidence interval. Right, right. So, so in order to use Lepsky's method, the, the first step is that we have to have some some uh, uh, some point estimators with uh, with uh, with intervals, with confidence intervals. How do, you find it? How, how do I? Okay. So that yeah, I, I don't completely skip that. But if under uh, under additional assumptions, like if we know the, the bounds of for the variance, one one can con one can construct such estimators. So so we, we in this paper we look at several cases when, uh, when, when you know a little bit, either you know you have some higher order, uh, higher moment uh, information, or you, you, or you know something about the variance, then, then you can con uh, construct these. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a true question. What, what, about, what about means of medians? <laughs> Let me explain to you why. Okay. If I have a bunch of data, a bunch of random variable like I did, if I take the median, I'm huh. going to increase the power. So for example, if you have 13 uh, Cauchy random variables, uh -huh. the median is going to have power 6. Uh -huh. Okay, so you start with something which doesn't have right. power, and then you increase. Yeah. And then you can take the median. Does yeah. anybody look at that? Uh, I have been looking at this just uh, a few last few days because uh, Stas Minsker showed me a paper of Vladimir student. What's his name? Uh, who's in Hong Kong? Yeah. yeah. So so he looks at the median. So he looks at uh, uh, the median of non-identically distributed random variables, and he has some really nice uh, results about what they look like. So the, the, because the problem I'm, I'm interested in is that what happens if, uh, if we have uh, independent but not identically distributed random variables with the same mean? Yeah, but that's and, and you, you said it work. For example, you, you can prove that the probability that the median is bigger than something exactly. is bounded by the maximum probabilities of the ten. Right, right. But you can do even better. Okay. So uh, in, in that paper, you, he has very nice, uh, uh, very nice results about what. So, so yeah. I think it's it. I, I agree. It's a true question. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we should we should talk before. Yeah. 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 So 
under your competition model for estimating the mu, uh -huh. does that work for the geometric medium? For the geometric medium. So, uh, so you need, you just interpret mu as the minimizer of the expected value of norm squared. Or just look at the expected value of just the norm. Then you get the geometric Oh, I see, I see, uh, I see. Um, I, I don't know. That's a good question. Actually, that, that problem is written in my list of problems that to look at what happens if you have a, a because you can think about the mean as the, uh, as the, uh, what's the mean? The mean is just the minimizer of the expected square distance. Now, wh what happens if we have, we want to estimate the minimizer of something else, of, of a general norm squared, for example? And then, yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah. It's to be studied. Yeah. OK, if there are no more questions, let's turn the board again.